Implementing antivirus protection is a four-step process. Step one is to discover if you have any malware present in your environment. Step two, remediate if you have malware present to prevent that malware from executing and to remove it from all network assets. The third step, now that we have removed any malware from our endpoints, we want to set up policies to ensure that we maintain that environment in a clean state going forward. And finally, step four, manage, using the web-based management console to keep an eye out for any malware events. Let me show you how we accomplish that. This is the Endpoint Management and Security Suite console through which the antivirus module is administered. The first thing we're going to do is to perform a virus and malware scan on the endpoints. We might do this following deployment initially, or we might do it just prior to a lockdown if we're using application control, or we might do this if we suspect there is a malware outbreak. We have the option to run the scan immediately, or we can run the scan later out of hours if we're concerned about any potential impacts on user productivity while the scan is running. We could also integrate with the Lumension Power Management solution to wake up any endpoints and perform a scan during the night. Next, we want to identify the target for the scan, either from endpoints or groups, and this is where we get the benefit of our integrated platform capabilities. We can either select some custom groups, system groups, or we've also got directory services group via integration with Active Directory. In this case, I've set up a test group that I'm using for initial deployment, so I'm going to add those to the scan. Next, we've got a number of options we can select for this one-time scan. Out of the box, the antivirus module provides traditional signature-based detection, both full and partial signature matching, along with advanced behavioral detection techniques, which includes Sandbox capabilities. Sandbox is a technology which determines in a simulated environment what malicious code would do if it were allowed to run on a real machine. So while signature matching blocks known malware, the behavioral techniques, including Sandbox, focus on recognizing, blocking, and removing unknown malware based on malicious behavior, and as such, provides an additional layer of defense against zero-day attacks. So while we get both of these techniques by default for all antivirus scans, we've got some additional options we can select on this page. We can either use the existing virus and malware scan policy, or we can select some additional options which might be needed if I want to perform a more thorough scan, as maybe this is the first time I've scanned these endpoints as I've just installed the Lumension antivirus module. I've got a number of actions to take for when a virus is detected. I could ask the antivirus module just to report when malware is discovered, but to take no action, or to delete files if it's unable to clean them. However, the recommended option is for the antivirus module to attempt to clean any infections, and if it is unable to clean the file, to move it into quarantine instead, so it can be analyzed further if required. I can also include the ability to scan boot sectors and to scan memory, which are useful to include in a full system scan. If I was doing a reduced targeted scan, I might exclude these options from the scan. I've also got the option to scan archives. Scanning archives takes time and will extend the scan duration. It's not critically important to scan archives because any malware buried in archives will get picked up by the real-time scanning policy when they are unzipped. But maybe I'm doing this scan because I'm about to create an endpoint whitelist if I'm using application control. So scanning archives would be useful to ensure that I don't add malware to the whitelist. If I've scheduled the scan to happen during normal working hours, I can throttle the CPU back to ensure that it doesn't impact on user productivity. Alternatively, if the scan is going to execute out of hours, I can allow the scan to use more CPU, which will ensure that the scan completes more quickly. From a logging perspective, I can choose to have normal logging or detail logging level. I would select the detail logging level if perhaps I was trying to do some troubleshooting, but I would usually just select normal logging, which will create a log entry for any malware detections. Now that I have selected the options for the scan, I can decide 
whether to exclude any files or paths from the scan, which I might want to do if I want to have a more targeted scan. I can also decide if I want to include locally attached media. When I click on finish, this scan task will be sent down to the endpoints and the scan will initiate. The next step is remediate. As the endpoint is scanned, if malware is discovered, in addition to logging that event on the endpoint, alerts will be sent up to the server so that the administrator can become aware that a malware incident has occurred. Let's have a look at the virus and malware event alerts to see how that information coming from the endpoints gets represented on the console. Here we can see we've got a number of alerts back from the endpoints. Some of these weren't cleaned but have been quarantined. Some of these have been cleaned. So what we would do now is to focus on quarantine files and on any endpoints which have not cleaned alerts and remediate those endpoints. To help me with this, I've got resources like the Lamention Endpoint Intelligence Center at leic.lamention.com. Here I can get some additional information on the latest threats and how they behave and how to remediate them. If files have been quarantined, we can upload suspect files to confirm whether they are truly malware, or occasionally you can get false positives, files which have been incorrectly flagged as malware, for which signatures need to be updated. And this will cause the files to be automatically restored from quarantine when those updated signatures get distributed. The next step in the process is monitor, whereby we establish policies to protect our endpoints on an ongoing basis. We do this under the Manage option. Here you can see we have antivirus policies, and we've also got application control policies, memory injection policies, device control policies, all integrated into the same workflow. For antivirus policies, we can create real-time monitoring policies and also recurring scan policies. The real-time monitoring policy is used to protect users from malware whenever they open or execute files. So this is your ongoing day-to-day -day virus protection policy. As you work through it, you will see that the workflow is quite similar to the Scan Now wizard you saw earlier, which is good because that means less training and less complexity and just lowers overall implementation cost. Again, you have some choices for the action to be taken when malware is detected. On this screen, we have some different settings for local users and users accessing the endpoint remotely, as the antivirus module can distinguish between the different types of access and apply different rules for each of these. In the case of local users, the default setting is to scan when files are being read or executed. However, for services or remote users, it's more important to scan anything that they write to disk. On the next screen again, very similar, excluding files or paths. Software vendors, such as Microsoft, will often have recommendations for files or folders that need to be excluded for performance reasons. So this is where you would apply those exclusions. To simplify this process, we have created exclude recommendations, which can simply be imported. You can review the list of imported excludes to ensure they are all applicable and add any others that you think are required. Finally, we have the targeting page, which has the same workflow for adding endpoints or groups. While the real-time monitoring policy is used to protect users from malware whenever they open or execute files, we can also create a recurring virus and malware scan policy, and this policy is used to scan for malware on a scheduled basis. Here you can see we already have a weekly recurring scan policy defined. It's set up as a weekly policy to run every four weeks on a Saturday. Again, the workflow is very similar to what you've seen before. Many of the same options again, the ability to exclude files or folders and assign to groups or endpoints. The final step in the process is manage, where we are going to use the web-based management console to watch out for any malware in the environment. So let's go to the home page. Here you will see 
we have a number of dashboard widgets that can be configured to provide an at-a-glance view of the environment. You can see here we have a number of antivirus widgets. We have endpoints with unresolved antivirus alerts, the top 10 virus or malware threats, and the top 10 infected endpoints. This gives the administrator immediate visibility into what's going on in the environment. You've also got a number of widgets from other modules as well, and these can be configured by the administrator to suit what they want to see in their environment. You can also use role-based access control to limit what gets displayed to the administrator. So you could have, for example, an antivirus-only administrator that would just have access to antivirus widgets. These widgets are all actionable, so you can drill down from any of these widgets to get the relevant information. So looking at the endpoints with unresolved antivirus alerts, I can see that I've got one endpoint with quarantine files. So I can get more information by clicking on that widget. In addition to the dashboard widgets, we've also got reports. Again, we've got reports across all the different modules, including antivirus. Looking at the antivirus reports, we could run the antivirus definition version status report to understand what definition versions we've got on our endpoints and whether any endpoints are out of date that I need to take action on. Or I could run a report on endpoints or groups with infections by date. This is quite a useful report to perform some detailed analysis on endpoints that are getting infected more often than others. In addition to reports, we've also got notifications. We can set up email notifications in the event that certain thresholds are exceeded for malware events. So here, you can define the thresholds for situation where the antivirus module was unable to clean, quarantine, or delete malware. This is malware that needs attention, so you would set a fairly low threshold for this. You might also want to set a higher threshold for when virus or malware was detected, even though it has been cleaned by the antivirus module, but you may want to know that an increasing amount of this is getting into your environment, so you can investigate how that is occurring. Finally, you have an option to have a periodic antivirus alert summary. So you can get an email notification once a day or once a week to see what new malware exists on your endpoints, which can be a very useful periodic reminder as part of a remediation workflow. The final area we might want to manage is the antivirus subscription updates, where we can get some information such as how recently the latest antivirus definitions were downloaded. And also, we can set some parameters, like how frequently to check for updated definitions. So that concludes this demonstration of Lumension Antivirus, the module which protects your endpoints against malware, zero-day exploits, and advanced persistent threats. In this demonstration, you have also seen the integrated nature of the Lumension Endpoint Management and Security Suite platform how we use antivirus to provide defense in depth, and a unified workflow that reduces IT management burden. I would encourage you to go and check out our other videos on the Intelligent Whitelisting Solution and the Endpoint Management and Security Suite platform. You can learn more on our antivirus webpage at www.lumention.com, and you can get a free personal one-on-one -on -one demonstration of the antivirus solution, or download a free evaluation copy of it. You can also download our free application scanner to understand what's really installed on your endpoints and get an idea of how big your attack surface really is. There's also a lot more information on our website about the antivirus module and how it will deliver you better security and lower total cost of ownership than other standalone alternatives. Thank you.